What is going on, everybody? Jumbo Thick here, back with more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, 4th edition. We are currently running our Rise of the Forsaken campaign. This is all technically unofficial content, with the exception of all of the rules and uh, most of the monsters uh, are coming out of the core rulebook put on by Cubicle 7. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself as Jumbo Thick, the DM for tonight. I will be making sure our adventurers die a horrible, horrible death <laughs> in the center of this mm. beastman camp. And let's go ahead and introduce ourselves, our adventurers, starting off with Mr. Jumbo Smooth. Hey, everyone. I'm Jumbo Smooth. I'll be playing the role of Marius Wolf. Um, I'm, a, I'm a human peasant, as you probably know by now, if you keep up with our videos here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a prospector, um, trying to become a miner. Um, I'm really strong. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the end of my statement. <laughs> and moving on to Mr. Doobie. What's going on, guys? I am playing a Seamus McGreedy, the human ranger who's a toll keeper. Uh, might I say the savvy human ranger toll keeper. Oh, yeah. Who's, mm -hmm. uh,. Occasionally pretty wicked with the crossbow. Sometimes. Occasionally. Not Except for when he has to shoot <laughs> rats from from a distance. Uh, something in his eye. <laughs> That's yeah. what we'll go so that gust of wind. <laughs> Must have been that gust, <laughs> gust of wind, wind that moved the crossbow <laughs> yeah. bolt. But that's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in, guys. Um, last we left off, our band of merry men, our adventurers, had managed to escape from the uh, beastmen herd that they found themselves um, being pursued by through the woods. A chance encounter with a witch of some kind, possibly, and um, various other circumstances led them together where they eventually found their way into the mining town of Sealburg, where most of our characters um, have some kind of connections. Once inside the town, you found out that this same herd has been sieging said town for at least a month at a time, and supplies were running dreadfully low. To make matters worse, the gate had been burned in some kind of act of sabotage. Um, rather conspicuously close to a time in which you chased a uh, bandaged hood figure through the uh, <laughs> the streets and whatnot. You met a few of the <laughs> town's more um, slippery residents, I will call Mr. Gold. <laughs> and mm. then you were all but drafted into a last-ditch effort to drive away the Beastman threat before they can essentially wipe Sealberg off the map. Um, not by choice, it turns out. <laughs> so you are currently have made your way through the Beastman camp. It was a horrifying and rather um, nerve-wracking experience, as you two are usually the most unstealthy of individuals, but somehow, uh, with a little bit of luck and a little bit of guile, made it through to the center of the camp where you have now come face to face with the leader of the Beastman Herd. And that is where we are opening up. So, in case you guys didn't don't remember, I'm going to give you a brief description of everything that you can see currently, and then we will go from there. Right. So, mm -hmm. the floor at your feet, both of you, are standing a couple feet past the small, well, not small, the decent-sized opening behind you um, in a rock um, structure, I would call it. Um, it's more of a wall, and it appears to be that there's been something kind of built up over the top of the wall, though you haven't had a good enough chance to really look at it. You've been a little too focused on the horror that's unfolding before you. You pass through this rock gateway, so there's a small, uh, I would say it's it's not small, it's probably about eight feet tall rock structure around you, mostly um, just walls. It is very dim lighting in here due to the fact that the 
moon, Morse slab, is being um, obstructed. There's a small hole in the top of this structure somewhere that is placing a beam of light down onto a massive um, herd stone, which seems to be about 20 feet tall. It is pulsing with green chaotic energy. It's a black stone and there's various etchings and appears to be some kind of smattering of liquids. Maybe feces, maybe blood, maybe a little bit of both. No one can know until you get close. <laughs> there is a bit of steam and whatnot rising off of it as you get the idea that it might be a, uh, a rather hot thing. So the lighting in here is has a bit of a gl greenish glow with what you get from that. There are a few braziers set up around the herdstone. This is a rather large room. Um, it's circular, completely circular room. The braziers are set up at inc incremental points, which to both of you would be very odd because beastmen are like... Um, they don't like um, order in any way. They are beings of pure chaos. And so the, the sheer fact that there's even a structure here and that there is some kind of order being present is not normal. But the braziers are made of, it looks like um, remnants of like swords and pieces of armor that have been kind of piled together. And then these small flames have been lit inside of them. The flames are also have a bit of a greenish glow to them as well. So you guys can see, though it is considered dim lighting. Okay. The ground is completely covered in bones of varying sizes and age. Some of them look fresh, still might have a little bit, bit of meat on them. Others look like they've been here for a hundred years. There's anything, any kind of bone you can think of. Some of them are human. A lot of them are actually beastmen and various other wildland animals and whatnot. Um, there is also, which you guys noticed right at the end of the previous session, you have are being surrounded currently in a bit of a half circle. 40 feet to your right, you have two large beastmen in hammered plate, blackened plate, it looks like, across their body. They're both wielding um, large two-handed axes with big notches in them. And they have two large curling horns on the sides of both of their heads. Um, you get the idea that these are the elite of this Varian herd. Then off to your left, you have another pair of bestigors. Um, about the same distance away, about 40 feet. And then dead ahead of you, you have standing next to the herdstone, gripping it with one hand currently, Tarkag in all his glory. <laughs> he is, I believe I said 12 feet tall. Yep. He is yeah. 12 feet tall. Um, he has four large curling horns. His fur is black. And it looks like it's matted and wet, all of it. Um, it's kind of a disturbing sight, even from this distance, which you guys are about 50 feet from the stone. And so you, you can see him, and because he's standing right next to the stone, stone specifically, you can see him very well. Um, he has large, massive, bulging muscles in his arms and legs, but his gut is huge and almost um, bubbling over the pieces of armor that have been kind of hammered onto his body, similar to the Bestigors. Though it almost looks um, comical because it looks like it used to be the same size as the Bestigors, the armor that is. And so it's almost like there's too much flesh bubbling in and around all of this armor. Um, and he is also wielding in one hand a massive sword. It is about the size of a ballista bolt or a small tree. It is also completely blackened. There are, appears to be um, some kind of symbols or runes carved throughout the blade and into the hilt. Um, they're actually kind of hurt your eyes if you look at them. 
Um, you're not sure what the hell they are, but there is a bit of a, a reddish glow from underneath them, which is very odd compared to the rest of the room. And at the very tip of the sword, you can just see a little bit of flame flickering back and forth. And it also is more of a, uh, a traditional reddish flame. Then on the oh, oh, good. Uh, other side <laughs> of the, uh, <laughs> then on, on the other side of the um, of the stone, there is a human-like figure, human in uh, humanoid figure, I guess I should say, with um, stag antlers upon its head, and it looks like a a thick, almost um, blackened cowl of some kind. You, it, it completely obscures the face, and it looks like the top of a jaw with like serrated teeth on it is all you can really see. You cannot see the face whatsoever or the rest of the body. And a matter of fact, it's almost strange because he's standing close to the stone as well, and yet you can't see pieces of him that you should be able to in the lighting. His hands are extended out from underneath his cloak and are weaving a pattern back and forth and you can hear a, a gentle humming his arms and um, hands appear to be heavily tattooed at least from what you can see and that is where we completely left off last time so you have this character this um sorcerer or some kind obviously from what he's doing because you can feel energy <laughs> pulsing through his hands um i'm gonna need you guys at this point to roll me initiative oh, yeah all right it's d10 right yeah roll a d10 and then add your initiative bonus okay mine would be nine Okay, nine for you. How about you, Mr. Seamus? Is that my advances? No, no, no. Um, advances? No, just your initiative bonus. So whatever the first number is for initiative. like thir It's like 30 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. so you're, every 10 of your... Every yeah, 10 is so. uh, considered your bonus. Yeah, I got a six then. Okay. Six for Mr. Seamus. And you had you rolled a nine? Correct. Yeah, all right. All right. I'll slide you in here. Mr. Wolf. Okay. All right. Combat has officially started, boys. Strap in. Oh, oh. All right. It's, it's been so long. Okay, so the sorcerer, <laughs> you see the uh, Tarkag is kind of, he looks over at the sorcerer and he kind of, uh, and he's speaking in what you recognize as the beastman tongue. And the the small figure kind of um, isn't breaking eye contact with the two of you. And the hands outstretch, and energy starts to accumulate toward at the fingertips. And then suddenly, let me roll this. Yep, a, a, you you hear a, <laughs> and an arrow passes between the two of you, and strikes the sorcerer directly in the chest. Oh uh, yeah. And you Dead. you can you hear the pitter patter t -t 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 of what you no doubt suspect is probably Angelica. Ah, as the arrow um, s slams into the the figure, which you you don't you only you can see the shaft sticking out, but you can't tell what it's hit underneath. Um, you then actually I need to roll a d one hundred for this. Okay, you see a brackish liquid shoot out from under the cowl towards where the antlers are, where the face should be. You just see lit, like almost blackened blood shoot out from underneath the cowl, and the the figure lump slumps down 
onto a uh, like a tripod um, with one hand kind of trying to stabilize itself on the ground, and the energy is completely dissipated at this point. And it looks up at the two of you, and it just it hisses. It goes, <sighs> and then it uh, turns around and moves to flee in the opposite direction. Mm. All right. And then we move on. Could we? Uh, Go ahead. Could we have seen its? Did we see its face when it turned up and hissed at us? No, you did not. It's completely obscured still. Okay. okay. So now we move into the Bestigor's turn, unfortunately. At the, at the sight of the arrow flashing by the two of you, off to your right. Now, I do need to ask the two of you, who's standing to the right and who's standing to the left? Uh, I'll stand to the right. Okay. I'll I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming you guys are both within a couple feet of each other. Yeah, I think yeah. We're pretty close. Okay. As soon as the arrow whoosh, wishes past the two of you, you see um, off to your right, Seamus, one of the Bestigors kind of stomps his feet and, and lets out a, a loud bray and starts charging towards you. And as it's closing the distance, it brings its head down. And you notice that this um, specific... Uh, Bestigor that's charging towards you has like one enormously huge shoulder pauldron on its right shoulder um, with like these kind of odd looking spikes and it looks like a human skull attached to them and it is actually lowered it almost like a football tackle and it's going to att he's going to attempt to impale you upon it oh. so I need you to either roll oh, a defense of some kind or a dodge? Oof. I'll go for that dodge. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. I rolled a 10. Oh, shit. Out of 27. Nice. Nice. Okay. The, um, the Bestigore, he, he tucks, tucks the head as he's charging. Hoping that if he misses you with the shoulder, he'll get you with the with the horns. But you definitely you see this coming, and um, as soon as he puts his head down, you manage to step out of the way, and he charges past you. And Marius, I'm going to give you a chance to get a free attack on him, as he has okay. overshot his mark and he's charging into you. Okay. So go ahead and roll uh, an attack and see if you hit. Roll attack. Okay. Let's see here. Attaches. Okay. Um. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's a twenty-two. Okay. Uh, out of forty-four. Okay, um, so that's two degrees of success. Which, oh, that's a critical uh, it's a crit. Oh yeah. shit! Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. How real quick? How much damage does your pick normally do? Uh. Let me see here. It's five. Five plus um, your strength. Is, so nine to yeah. eleven. So we'll, we'll so call nine. that eleven. Plus Jesus. it's good to see impale. Um, perk. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It penetrates some armor. Yeah. So, well, um, I, I was rereading the rules on this. If you get a critical hit, it bypasses mm -hmm. armor and toughness. It's just straight oh, health, okay. health damage. So we won't even have to worry about that. Cool. So we're looking at, um, I said 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that brings, oh shit, man, that's a that's a hard hit. Um, <laughs> Do I need to roll the critical, critical yeah, roll? Yeah, roll me a, uh, a D100 real quick. Okay. 50. Okay, 50. So that puts, let me look at this real quick. All right, 50, da, 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 da. All right, body shot. All right, roll me one more D100. All right. Uh, 82. Jesus. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, what's it do? <laughs> well, okay. Um, you as the as the gore overshoots his mark from Seamus, and the head comes up. Uh, as he's he's looking back and he's looking to turn back around, not noticing that he's charged past him and into you, just waiting with your pick. And you bring the pick up, mm. and it punches straight through his chest. And you you get the feeling that you feel it sink in deep, and you feel tearing inside of its body, and it just kind of mm. whimpers as you pull the pick out and massive amounts of blood just start gorging themselves. Blackened blood starts gorging itself at your feet, almost completely covering you in um, essentially brackish beastman blood from the waist down. And he is actively oh. just, blood is just shooting out of his out of his chest at this point. He is still standing. Okay. He's but looking pretty rough though. He's looking... Looking bad, looking real bad. Um, he okay. does now at this point, he is um, going to uh, take a swipe at you, Marius, since he's now okay. engaged with you. So I need you okay. to roll defense. Now you can't, you will get, you do have momentum at this point. So you have uh, one momentum, okay. so plus 10. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, that's going to be 33. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. And okay. that's out of 54. I don't know if you can't create on defenses, right? That's not a thing. Yeah, you can actually. Oh, so you actually do damage to him again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> For the, okay. Go ahead and roll. You know what? It's not going to matter. Go ahead and roll a D 100 and we'll see where it hits. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> Jesus. Uh it's a six. Okay, sixty. Alright. Once a, okay, so once again. Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, right. oh yeah, you're right. Six. Okay. So yeah. um he having you just pulled the pick out from his body, he looks up at you um with fear in his eyes. There's blood coursing all over your feet. And he brings the axe up and it looks like it could do some serious damage. And he brings it up, and before he can even make another move, you swing the pick over your shoulder, and it just penetrates through the top of his head, instantly killing him. He just goes limp oh, yeah. and oh, falls no. at your feet, dead. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fuck these beastmen, bro. <laughs> My God. Okay. Um... I'm I'm gonna consider that still your one advantage. That doesn't count as two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was about to add. Okay, I'll take it off. I just added it on there, so I'll take that, it off. That's, that's only one, one. That's only one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Defenses don't count as one. Advantage. Well, it it would, but it it was in the same turn. Does that make any sense? Okay. You you can't rank up too many yeah. in uh, anyways. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you, you still have momentum on your side and it actually is now sure. your turn, your turn. Um, so you just killed one of the best of gores. He's laying at your feet. Tarkag is mm. menacingly staring at you. He's slightly <laughs> out of your range, um, by about 10 feet if you wanted to charge him, but you have, he's like, um, he's, oh, he's really close. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's like close. Like the, the center, this room, it's not huge, but it's, um, okay. It's not exactly small either. Like, um, Shit. yeah, he, he's decently close. Okay. Um, but close so were the, the other. Gores? So the, the best of gores to your left are 50 mm -hmm. feet or excuse me, 40 feet. And then there, it's going to be 40 another feet. 40 feet to the one remaining on the right. Okay. So what would you like to do? That's all you can see right now. You can see those uh, those four. You can make a perception check if you want to try to see what else you can see. Um. Yeah, I might try to make a perception check. If if can I still attack if I make the perception check, or is that my turn? 
Uh, it would probably it, it would probably be your turn. Okay, then maybe I won't. Uh, okay, if Tarkag is if Tarkag <laughs> is ten feet away from me, hey, no, 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 uh, he's fifty feet. He's fifty feet. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I like, what I was saying is, you could cover <laughs> you could cover forty, and then you'd still have ten feet more. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, all right, I will probably go to someone that would be in my range. Uh, so okay. I'll go to. Um, I'm gonna go to the single uh, Bestigor. Okay. So you're gonna rush right. past, rush past Seamus to the Bestigor yeah. on his side. Yeah, just kind of finish off this one side and then oh, okay. focus on the rest. All right. So um, I'm gonna give you a. Uh, are you are you charging? What are you doing? I mean, it'd probably be in the heat of battle, so I probably would be, you know. And he wouldn't be walking over there. Yeah, really, okay. All right. <laughs> Full sprint charge. If you yeah. for a charge, you get an additional plus ten. Okay. So I'll give you All that, right, then and then you can go ahead and just make me attack roll. Okay. Let's see here. So that will be nine out of uh, sixty-four. My God. Okay. <laughs> um how many how many uh degrees of success is that that would be five degrees of success in okay. addition to nine so 14 14 yep okay or close to close to yeah. close to five yeah yeah and you roll the nine so that's 90 let me look yeah. up where this is gonna hit okay so you charge past seamus do you say anything to him on your way past Say, watch this, and I. Uh, <laughs> run, <laughs> okay, run past you, him. Full of bravado with Co this covered point. in covered in beastman blood. You yeah, are. Yeah. You're covered in beastman, br like the brackish, like black, and it smells awful. It just smells horrible. You charge across the room past one of the braziers. Um, as you get close to the brazier, you notice that there's actually like a lump of some kind of stone inside the brazier itself, um, giving like a weird glow okay. to it. Um, you rush past it, and the Bestigor over there, just, you just saw you murder its friend. But unlike most of the beastmen you've encountered today, um, these ones seem to be made of much sterner stuff. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem to be phased by uh, what you just did. Um, it yeah. it gives out a loud call and kind of thrusts its <laughs> axe up and attempting to intercept um, your attack. And as soon as you get there, you swing the pick and you actually swing it underhand low and you take mm -hmm. the best to in the right thigh, gouging deep mm. into the thigh. And you did, uh, how much damage was it again? 14. 14. Minus All right. Okay. Does he have armor on his thigh? He has he has armor across most of his body. Um, okay. If you would have you rolled a nine, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. If now the here's the thing with the plate on the beastmen, it's not um, mm -hmm. it doesn't cover the entire body. So if you mm -hmm. guys roll an even number, and it's a hit you will bypass the armor just because it doesn't Ooh. cover all okay. of her flesh. If that makes any sense. Okay. Since it's an yeah, odd yeah. number, it's still, it's still got through the armor. Um, but yeah, I mean, you yeah. penetrated and it looks like it hurt. You, you dig it in and it, it's, it's a pretty deep, deep wound. He, um, the, the best of gore kind of, kind of, um, shakes his leg. And as you're, you're this close now, you notice that this one in particular has um, feathers growing out of its face and down its neck hmm. where there used to be fur, but now it looks like almost avian feathers. And it looks like the the goat-like snout that it once had is starting to kind of um, shift and change into almost a, a beak-like appendage. Huh. Okay. And it almost like a bray squeals at you 
um, after you wound it, and it kind of pushes you away, and it's ready to engage you. Um, you do keep your advantage. Uh, so okay. I need you, and as soon as he pushes you away, he lunges in for an attack against you. So I need you to roll for defense in some way. Okay. I'll be using my, my weapon skill here. Okay. My, my melee two hand. So let's see. That will be 26 out of 64. Um, so that is, is that three levels of success? Uh, yes. Three. Okay. Let me, let me make sure I did the math on this right. <laughs> Three, four. Okay. Yep, that's right. Smith's killing me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, the axe actually comes down with freakish strength and you were lo you I mean you're a strong man but the axe mm. the haft of it comes down smacks into your two-handed grip on your pick as you bring it up to to guard and you're just mm -hmm. not strong enough oh, it, comes, no. it, it pushes down <laughs> and the and the blade of the axe actually bites down into your chest dealing oh, no. oh. 10 damage. 10. That's my, Ten. my toughness. And then, yeah, you can subtract your toughness from it. Okay. But you have lost the momentum in the fight. And it looks like yeah. he has yeah. gained it. And he kind of squeals okay. in your face as it happens. <sighs> All right. Then, um, from Seamus, from behind you, you hear... Rally the men! And you hear Captain Jaeger and all his glory <laughs> come running <laughs> past you. So much glory. And he he um he enters the room and you can hear him you hear him cluck 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 heavy footsteps. And he pulls up short next to you, Seamus, and just looks around at the horrifying sight that you guys have all run into. And he looks he looks from the left to the right and he, he calls out, he says, Aaron's Christoph! Take the soldiers. I'm coming for him. And he points at Tarkag directly right at his face. And oh, shit. as oh. he does that, um, let me roll real quick. Okay. Um, you guys both feel, if you choose to feel, a little um, enheartened. By his speech, and if you do, it, do you feel inspired in some way? I, I do. You do. Yeah, okay. stirring in my, in my heart. You do. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what happens if it comes up, but for now, um, okay. we'll, we'll just leave it at that. And he um, can't make it to Tarkag, but he actually he has his his um his rapier by his side he's got his pistol drawn and he actually moves in front of you Seamus about 20 feet in front of you and he levels the pistol at Tarkak and Tarkak just kind of menacingly looks down at him and doesn't even um seem worried whatsoever mm. and uh um, right. let's see here let's see what he does Nope. He goes to, he brings the pistol up and it kind of, <laughs> and he, no. he looks down at it and he <laughs> smacks it a couple times. Oh, like, bloody piece of, and he shoves it back into his belt and just holds the rapier now and takes up like a dueling stance. Mm. Okay. It did not explode. <laughs> so that's a plus. Yeah, you know, positives, it, yeah. It, 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 it could have. Um, then you hear the clanking of two more armored figures, Seamus. I'm assuming you're not going to turn around and look at these people coming through the door. But you hear, um, Captain! And then he, uh, 
they, they look around and then they see the two bestigors um, off to your left and they move, but they can't quite get to them. They get about halfway between you and them and both of them put up their shields and they kind of lock them together and they look like they're going to square off with the two on the left. That is about all, all that right. they can do. So then we come to the next bestigor who... Seamus, as you're looking over to your left, you see that um, the one of them moves towards uh, one of the soldiers who now, you know, should be named Aaron's. Um, this Bestigor has one eye, which kind of sets him out from the different from the rest of them. And he is going to attempt to take off the soldier's head, um, which... Oh. Unfortunately, he doesn't take his head off, but he does, however, dig this axe oh deep past the shield into the soldier, into Aaron's body. You just see it cleave through through the, the little bit of shield that he had, um, actually breaks some of it in the process, and it digs deep into his chest. He is armored. Um, he is wearing like some leather armor, but it still penetrates. And you see some blood smatter at his feet. And you hear him, ah! And just kind of cry out. And then um, the soldier next to him is like, no! Let's see here. <laughs> he takes significant damage <laughs> from this, actually. Oh, um, he's looking pretty bad. He just kind of, ah! And he, and he um, the axe, oh. axe gets pulled away. So a little bit more blood's kind of spilling out. But he still has his sword. And he looks like... Uh, Looks like he's not planning on running. This might be a fight to the death. Oh. Now right. it is your turn, Mr. Seamus. All right. So I will take, uh, I guess it would be 10, step backwards 10 feet because I'm still in range of Tarkag with my bow. Yeah, with your crossbow. But I can also get, yeah, I can also get a little farther away from the guy attacking uh, Marius. Okay. I'll still be within range of him. Okay. And then I will take a shot at the uh, beastman attacking Marius. Okay. Um, as you take the the couple steps back, you hear a <clears throat> on your left, and you've kind of uh, you bump into actually you bump into Angelica who has her bow drawn and ready to Ooh. go, and you oh, step yeah. you step a little bit past her. Um, you take aim now. You do notice as you take aim at the beastman that marius is fighting that you have you have a decent shot from this angle but if you were to miss there may be some implications for for missing just i'm just throwing it out there <laughs> <laughs> so okay. so just depending on how badly this goes so go ahead and take your attack right. if you wish all right let's do it oh boy don't worry marius <laughs> All right, I rolled a forty out of fifty. You rolled a forty. I rolled a forty. That's out a of crit. 50. Is it? Yes. Factors of ten are oh. are are crits for for you guys because you have uh, penetrating oh, on your yeah. um on your oh, weapons. Oh yeah. Hey, and it breaks the yeah. uh, it breaks the armor. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how much damage does that? It does nine plus. Is it my strength bonus? Uh, no, not it's not your, for uh, not, yeah, not for you. It's not. It's just whatever success level. Um, so that was one success yeah. level. So so ten damage, just straight yeah, 10, so damage. ten damage. Um, go ahead and roll a d one hundred for me. Oh, hell yeah! I rolled a four. <laughs> no, you did not. Nice. <laughs> okay. I rolled a, dip, I rolled a zero, roll, two zeros roll, and then a four. I guess roll, roll it again. All right. That was a 72. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you you take aim and you, um, I'm assuming you just kind of look over at uh, Angelica and say, watch this. Oh, yeah. Give her a wink. Give her, give her a little wink. She kind of, <laughs> she kind of, she kind of um, looks at you and 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 almost a little perturbed that you're kind of, you know, jesting with her at this moment. But um, 
you you take aim and you fire and you and Marius and this and this beastman are locked together like weapon to weapon in combat. Um, you see an opportunity. Marius moves his head a little bit to the left and you whoosh, let loose the bolt. You see it strike true. It flies straight past Marius' head, skims a little bit of his cheek, get a little drop of blood on it, passes by, takes the gore in the jaw, goes in and goes goes through the bottom of the jaw and almost and goes through and into the throat and then passes through the back of it. Just straight through, clean shot. Um, before the gore can even scream, it kind of... And then just more blood coughs up onto Marius's face as it stumbles <laughs> forward onto you, <laughs> Mr. Wolf. Um, it doesn't pin you down or anything. You just kind of... It goes limp, and you just kind of push it down, and it kind of falls back. It's obviously dead. Yeah. I, you guys are running through these like nobody's business. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Seamus, is that going to be your turn? You still have some movement if you want to take it, and you do have your free action. Um, I am letting you guys, uh, you specifically, Seamus, attempt to um, reload your weapon, if you'd like, with your free action um, to, to get ready for uh, the next round. Yeah, I'll do the, the reload. Okay, so you just roll me ballistic skill test. This will not be with the momentum you just built up. It's just a straight test. Okay. I rolled a 15. Okay. Out of straight ballistic, so that would have been a 40. Yeah, you easily you easily um find find the uh well, it's not exactly a quiver. I'll call it a quiver cuz I don't know what the hell it's called right now. Um the place where you keep your crossbow bolts and you easily slip one in, shaft it back and you're you're ready to go for your next round. Um Is that going to be it? That will be it. Okay, Mr. Seamus, you are done. The left side, or the right side of the room appears to be clear at this point. Though, um, Marius, you are going to be quite a distance away from the other side <laughs> of, okay. of the room if you choose to go that way. Um, okay. However, Seamus, you notice now looking to your left, which you have to look past um, Angelica a little bit, but you can see a the... Another Bestigore, the other one that was um, over on the left side, now also um, charges the uh, the second soldier, Kristoff, uh, brings his head down. You can see even from this distance that the teeth inside the mouth of this gore um, are, they seem to be enlarged severely uh so much more so that the uh the lips are pursed and almost like uncomfortably open um almost like uh like shark teeth in a way and he charges brings his head down and is going to attempt to smack the soldier which Kristoff places his shield on the way takes the the charge head on smacks the the head up but the Bestigor, being the elite soldier he is, also, as his head moves up, attempts to swing. And once again, Kristoff uh, brings the shield, intercepts the, uh, the, the, uh, the axe before it can actually do any damage to him and pushes it to the side. And they're squared off in combat. Now... Seamus, after seeing yes. that, you see this cacophony of sound. You hear, mm, my turn. And Tarkag begins moving from the stone. <laughs> boom. Boom. All the weight behind him. His entire sword at this point just lights with this red flame. The, the two eyes on the side of his head glow um, almost an eerily red, and then the eye that is in the center of his forehead opens up completely, and there's just this piercing almost black orb and an all odd spiral in the center of it as it looks straight at you, which is unnerving because he twists 
his head to the left and actually looks at Marius, but yet the single eye is looking at you, Seamus. I need both you guys to make me cool tests. With All right. with a plus 10. Now, normally you, you don't get your momentum on these tests, but you will get a mm-hmm. plus 10 from the rousing speech from Captain Jaeger. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. I rolled a 43 out of 60. Shit, okay, you're good. Well, how about you, Mr. Seamus? I rolled a 39, and luckily with that plus 10, it's out of 49. All right. So, um, both of you, and you barely skimmed by, Seamus. You have to had a, you had Ooh. to have a, a one success level on this. Um, but you, you feel almost a fear um, begin to seep into your bones at the, the sheer presence of this individual. And he's kind of walking towards Marius, but at the same time, he casually looks over and sees Captain Jaeger standing there. And um, he... Captain Jaeger, um, still in his dueling stance, have at you, beast! And he actually, <laughs> as long as they get, since he does actually get into range with Tarkag as he's um, moving, um, let me roll for this. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me roll for Tarkag. Oh, shit. <laughs> well. You see, oh. um, <laughs> you see, you see, uh, Jaeger actually, um, lunge and he actually gets an attack off, um, towards Tarkag as he moves, um, in his direction. They come in, they close in the distance and you see the, the rapier move out, but it just skids off of the, the plate that is kind of, um, Barely holding together on Tarkag's legs. It just kind of skids off. And Tarkag looks down at him with just these hateful eyes. Brings his sword up. Oh, God. (laughs) And (laughs) and (laughs) as it comes down with all the flames lighting, it comes down. And at the last second, I mean the very last second... Um, Captain Jaeger, you see the red cloak billow out to his left as he makes a roll to his right underneath Tarkag's feet in between them as the sword slams down into the bones, splintering bones fly all over the place. There's dust, but he has avoided the strike from what you can tell, Seamus. All right. However, that was with one Ooh. hand. And as Tarkag tracks the the piddly human rolling around at his feet he swings with his left barehanded in like a back fist towards where the captain is standing and captain jaeger takes a giant meaty fist the size of his torso to the body. Even though he brings up his arms to defend himself, it hits him and it deals significant damage. Um, sure. He is, however, wearing his armor, so we can we can mitigate some of this. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. Luckily, he is a, a stout, a very hardy man. And he takes. Uh, he's he's not looking bad. He's looking he's looking a little rough. <laughs> um, you can tell that uh, he it hits him and he, um, he doesn't lose his rapier. He doesn't lose his grip on it, but he he slides about five feet from Tarkag, just bracing himself, and digs in. And um, you can tell there's a little bit of blood on both of the, uh, dripping down from his sleeves, and he just kind of looks up at him. That the best you got. Oh. And uh, and Tarkang oh. just kind of stares at him, um, and that is the end of the first round. <laughs> the top of the round, Angelica. 
um, takes aim. You can see the Seamus. You can see her take aim with her bow, draw it back, and she unleashes a bolt at uh, at Tarkag. And it actually um, move. It, it moves to hit him, and it looks like it's going to hit. There's no way she, you can't miss this giant behemoth walking around in this room. <laughs> But it actually skids off of one of his horns. It just deflects off of it. And he kind of looks over at, uh, at the piddly human that just took a shot at him. And um, she actually slips back into the entryway. And uh, you actually lose track of her, Seamus. You have no idea where she went. Oh. All right. Now it is Marius's turn. Marius. You just witnessed the second Bestigore get felled before you. Um, the, the feathers on the neck kind of poof out as, you, as it slides off of uh, the, the pick that you had, were holding it up with. Um, push him down mm. to the ground. You look, to your, look back to now at the um, cacophony of sound that you're hearing behind you. Um, mm. As you, you hear the, the yells and, and taunting of Captain Jaeger with Tarkag. You look back and you can see that um, somehow he's ended up on the other side of the monster. Um, looks like he's braced himself and he's taken up another dueling stance. But Tarkag seems to be focused at the moment in Seamus' direction. Um, you are about okay. uh, 20 feet from from Tarkag. Okay. You are about, um, at this point, you're about uh, 50 feet from Seamus. And you are okay. almost eighty feet from the other uh, soldiers and the uh, the bestigors on the opposite side of the room. Now, okay, the actual herdstone is only about um, twenty feet from Tarkag in the direction um, that he's standing, so it's a little obscured, but you can see it because it's just huge and glowing. So okay. what would you like to do? Um, question. Is my amulet doing anything? Currently? I, I don't want to yes. give anything away. Currently, no. Currently, no. Okay. You uh, are wearing both of them, correct? Correct. Okay. <laughs> um, also, another question. Um, health potions, is that going to take an action or free action? That's going to be a free action. That would be your free action, and you would get your toughness bonus um, and wounds back. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do that as my free action. So you're going to you're going to chug one. one of my... Yeah, I'm going to chug one. Okay. Um, and you said Tarkag is 20 feet away with me, engaged in melee with uh, Captain Jaeger, and he Seamus is a little bit behind him. And Seamus is actually where you left him. Um, to okay. your left. Seamus is to your left. Tarkag's a little bit slightly to the right. Okay. And so he just has like a humongous reach, I guess. Like he, um, he's you, just like... You would, you would assume he has quite the reach. Okay. Well, I'm gonna... I guess I'm gonna... Dust up with Tarkag then. Oh, so, yes. Do it. Uh, so I, I'm going to uh, uh, kind of charge from, I guess, you know, I guess the way I kind of envision it is Jaeger's on kind of kind of one angle, and I'm kind of going for another right angle out at Tarkag here. Okay. Um, yeah, are you before gonna I, I fully make it in, go ahead. I'm going to charge. I'm going to charge at him, but I'm going to kind of uh, look the Seamus and. Uh, Help those other lads, friend. And um, I'm going to just charge in with my pick. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, for an attack. Geez. All right. Go ahead and go ahead and roll oh. an attack at, for Tarkag. All right. For glory. For glory. <laughs> so that is going to be a, a 16 out of 44. Um, however, I would like to use my I believe the damaging perk allows me to use the six as the it number does. of successes. It does. So I would like to have six degrees of success, please. Six successes. Okay, let me let me let me uh, make sure for my roll. 
Okay. You said six degrees? Yeah. You just barely made that. <laughs> you barely, <laughs> barely made that. Okay. So <laughs> you actually, yeah, um, he rolled good defense. So he sees you coming. And he actually mm. sweeps the sword back towards you. But he's mm. he's too slow. You pass underneath it as it cleaves into the ground behind you. A big, a big, massive crunching noise as it starts cleaving through the bones and more dust flies up. But you get past him, and you roll. What was the the dice number again? Six sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, so sixteen. Mm. Okay, yeah. So you actually, um, as he's lunging down, you get an opportunity to. You're tried and true through this fight. You slam the pick into his side, into his torso. It digs deep into where mm. you think might be a um, maybe a some intestine or something like that. Um, and mm. how much damage do you normally deal? Um, deal nine. Nine. nine? Uh, yeah. Nine plus uh, plus six. I mean, shit. That's that's quite a bit. Fifteen. And then, since it was an even roll, you bypass the natural the um, plate armor. Um, nice. But Tarkag is a very tough individual. I'm assuming he is. I'm assuming he's got a fair amount of toughness. So you, so you, you, you see him flinch. You see, and he flinches. And as you, now that you're this close to him, you just, the smell is just horrendous. And you can smell dried feces, and but the most overwhelming smell is blood. Stale, old blood mixed with like new, fresh, coppery scent. And all of his fur appears to be matted as if he, as if he just took a bath in just a pool of blood. Um... Mm. As he flinches, um, you also see his muscles tense, and your pick is lodged in his stomach for now. I'm going to need oh. you to make a strength test to pull it out. Okay. That's going to be 26 out of 49. Okay. Okay. You, you, you feel some tension as you yeah, you pull it and you you pull it free easily enough you are standing at his feet still um mm. before you do anything else before you take any movement you feel a um you're about 20 feet from the herdstone at this point and it's glowing and you can feel heat emanating off of this thing from this distance you feel one of the necklaces uh, underneath your now are they are they outside of your shirt or are they underneath the shirt uh underneath okay so you feel one of them begin to tug itself in the direction of the herdstone mm. from under your shirt almost like it's it's being it's being pulled towards it okay so you are free to take your movement at this point well um I'm locked in combat, so I don't know if I'd move from him because okay. he'd get an opportunity attack, uh, wouldn't he? Uh, he I, this, that, that, this is that's a new up round, to you. So. That's up to you. What do you I, think? I, I, I am going <laughs> to stay there. So you're going to stay? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, that will end your turn then. Now it is Captain Jaeger's turn. And Captain Jaeger, you see him, um, now that you've distracted Tarkag, he brings out, he's like, bloody. And then he starts smacking on the on the pistol. And um, you hear you hear like a clink, something gets loose. He brings it up, and boom! Just this massive, huge, deafening noise as the pistol goes off into Tarkag. Oh, shit, it's a critical, too. Okay, so it actually Thanks. takes um, <laughs> Tarkeg. My God. He, okay, let's. Oh, well, let me roll for this. I got. There's a lot of rolling going on right now. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um. Forty-nine. 
Okay. You see, um, as the pistol with the jamming, and you see him as he's muttering to himself, Tarkag um, takes his gaze away from you and looks at the small little man with the little tiny thing pointed at him. And it, boom, opens up. And he actually strikes Tarkag right in the center of his third eye. And you just hear, oh, and he screeches out this horrible noise belts out from him it actually almost deafens you in the process marius being this close to him and his hand moves up to cover the wound which is now actively bleeding um also at <laughs> also his eyes are just covered in blood and he's wildly swinging his arms around and he's dealt considerable damage to him in the process nice is he blind? You you'll you'll find out, I guess. Mm. Oh, all right. He's clutching all at right. his face, and he is actively bleeding. You can see blood just pouring out from the open wound. And Jaeger's like, "Ah, you bastard!" And he runs in, and he moves <laughs> to. Yep, he actually sticks him in his leg <laughs> with with his rapier <laughs> for more damage. Um, let's see here. That'll bring him down to... Okay. At this point, I mean, it digs in deep. It goes all the way to the hilt. And you see, um, Marius, you can see a little piece of a little point out the other side as the rapier goes all the way through and is pointing out. And he, and he tenses. And he barely struggles to pull the rapier outside of uh, Tarkag's body. Pulls it out. And he, and he just kind of, oh, kind of gives a little sigh of relief. And um, at that point, Tarkag drops to one knee, and he looks badly hurt. Oh, yeah. That would be the end of um, Captain Jaeger's turn. Now, um, Seamus, you see off to your left, you see the one-eyed Bestigore that has been fighting Mr. Kristoff. You see yes. him once again at the sight of blood coming out of uh, the soldier's um, chest. He rears up again and brings the axe down. But Aaron's interposes his shield, catches the axe, pushes it aside easily enough. And he's actually going to lash back at him. And he also misses. So he <laughs> comes back. Oh. He makes a swing with his little, with his, with his, uh, his long sword that he has. Well, it's a short sword, really. He swings at the, at, uh, the best of gore and the, the one eye uh, almost flinches at being pushed back, but being such a hardened veteran soldier, he takes the blow on his chest armor. It just skids off easily enough doing, dealing no damage. Now it is your turn, Mr. Seamus. All right, I'm going to take a shot at that one-eyed uh, gore to my left. Okay, um, there are two men um, in active combat in between you and them, and both of the Bestigors, so you're going to have a little bit harder of a roll. It's going to be at minus, uh, for you, minus 10, if you take the shot okay. from your current position. Uh, if I move, will it, will it affect that? If, I move, if you like, move, if you right. move around the circumference of this circular room, you could get at a better angle from them, though it will put you at more distance from Tarkag and more distance from the entrance. But you could get a better angle and not incur any penalty. It'd be about um, tw 20, 20 feet or so. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do the movement. Okay, and you're still the same distance from them. It's just you're kind of moving around the circ, uh, the edge of this room. Gotcha. So go ahead and make your right. attack then. That is a 39 out of 50. Okay, easily enough. Um, 39, let's see where that hits. Okay. Um, a nine... You normally deal nine damage, but ten. Okay, ten damage. Mm -hmm. uh, Ninety-three. 
All right, so it's odd number. All right, so you actually let loose the bolt, and it whooshes past the uh, at one of the bestigors, um, the one you weren't actually aiming at, and it hits the one you are straight in his in his right thigh. The bolt just you see it suddenly appear in his right thigh, and he kind of ah grunts out. Um, you dealt some damage. It looks like it didn't dig in as deep as the previous one, where he almost took off the beast's head. But some damage is better than none. Um, let's see here. And you've at least put some more uh, damage on him. And you have gained some more momentum in the process. Um, is yeah. there anything else you'd like to do? You still have your free action. And you still have a little bit of movement. Yeah, I'll just use the rest of my movement to kind of go back towards where I was standing. Okay, so, so you just kind of use the bolt to, psh, and then you go back to where you're standing. Do you want to try attempt to reload with your reaction? Yes. Okay, go yes. ahead. Now that's just a straight roll, <laughs> but you got this, I'm sure. Ooh, straight roll. I did not do it this time. I got a 57. Uh, is are you? You're counting your crossbow bonus too, right? Yeah, because it would be. Okay, yeah, 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 I still missed it. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, you your your hands kind of slip on the bolt, and you can try um, in the next round to reload. All right. Okay. As that you will be it move, for me. all right. As you move back, um, the next bestigor, the big one with the oversized teeth, kind of brays into the face of Kristoff uh, as he's deftly um, deflected two of its attacks at this moment, and he's going to attempt to once again hit him. But no, he can't. The shield once again comes up, and this shield has been a lifesaver. Nice. It's, it's getting battered and bruised <laughs> in the process. And Kristoff actually lunges with the sword forward and actually manages to find a gap in the, um, the plate armor in the beastman's chest. And you see the, the, uh, the sword actually plunge in, get, dig a little, a little bit deeper than... Um, uh, the wound that you might have inflicted, Seamus, and pulls out of the uh, the Bestigor, and it kind of, <laughs> and a little bit of blood comes out. Um, it is now damaged fairly well. Um, it's it's not looking good. So that a fight appears to be doing a little bit better, and that is the <laughs> end of his turn. And now it is. Tarkag's time to shine. Um, being in the state he's in, um, Marius, you being like almost at his feet, you you <laughs> smell um, an interesting scent start to come off of his body. It smells repugnant, but um, almost like uh, almost like brimstone, like sulfur smell, kind of start seeping out of the wound that you made on him. And you mm. see some of the flesh begin to bubble around it and knit itself back together. Oh, gee. And All right. It's cool. <laughs> and okay. You see some of his wounds knit back together. And he stands. Good try. And he brings the sword down upon your head, Marius. Roll for defense in some way. Oh, now, if you go, defense. if you you can attempt to block this thing with your pick, you just cur okay. incur a minus twenty penalty to block it. Okay. So you make the decision. Um, it, it, you can use your momentum in this, but uh, okay. Um, technically, I would have more with my. Uh, dodge. Uh, okay. I keep, can I use my dodge with my? Can I use dodge with momentum? Yes, you can. You can, you, you can yeah. use dodge okay. with your momentum. Okay, so technically, I'd have slightly more dodge. Uh, I believe you use it minus twenty. And now, if wait, I if try you, to block it, if you try to block, yes. But if you're dodging, there's yeah, no, okay. there's no negative. Okay. Yeah. So technically, it's it's slightly better. So I'm going to try to dodge it with my momentum here. So. Oh, uh, that's going to be, uh, 
a half success. It's uh, 32 out of 36. Um, I'm going to give you an opportunity here. That's a reroll. Um, well, now here's here's <laughs> you you can do more than just reroll with your fortune point. You can okay. add, you can add one success level with your fortune point. Okay. Um, if you choose to do so. Okay. Let me just put it like this: and... You see the massive blade coming down towards you, even as you move to roll. Should you not okay. burn your fortune point? Okay. <laughs> you can either completely roll again or you can just add one success level. Uh I'll add one success level. We'll just add okay. one success level. So All right, guys. <laughs> All right. All right. So you <laughs> so you um you see a flicker, almost like a flicker of um a brief moment where you see this blade crashing down upon you and probably cleaving you and twine, but um, oh. something something happens, and um, maybe the fate of the gods in some way, and you manage <laughs> at the last second to roll to the side as this blade crashes down, covering you in in bone dust, which is mingling rather well with the almost tar like beastman blood that's been caking across your body. Look like Kratos. You you do actually look like <laughs> Kratos right now. <laughs> so yeah, you've got this bleach white kind of look about you. It looks very interesting in the green kind of shimmer of the air right now. So you can All cave right. in that. And as he misses, he actually brings up and he moves to kick you with one of his massive cloven hooves. So I need you to Oof. once again either block or defense. And it's still minus twenty with his hoof. It's minus twenty if you if use was... if you use your uh, pick. Really? Okay. Does that count? Do, can I? Do I add that momentum of that defense? Um. Like yeah, you mark? can add that. You can add that to your your count. Now we are capping okay. this at six. I don't know how many you have right now. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm at two. So. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm going to uh, dodge. Okay. Go ahead so. and roll me a dodge. That is 18 out of, that would be 46. So, okay. Double, so you, um, after after the, the roll you just made, you see one of the hooves come up the, the left uh, the left leg and just turn, as, as he's turning, it looks like he's turning towards Captain Jaeger and you see it just punch out like a horse. And you, you manage to see it coming just in the nick of time. And you fall flat, prone on the ground as it whoosh is above you. You know that definitely would have possibly killed you as it had it hit you. And then it <laughs> oh, and, and then it, it rushes back and then plants back on the ground. Just boom. Cool. And then um, that is all Tarkeg can do. Question. Um, yes. Do I know like how much he healed? Can I can I look at him and like see like oh he you, healed a lot or is you it can just, like, see negligible? that he regained a significant amount of health. Okay. Is is the eye still bleeding profusely? The eye is still bleeding. Okay. So he is still bleeding. So he is taking damage from that. But okay. he uh, he had wiped it away and recovered in time yeah, to attack you. Doesn't appear to be blinded. Nope, okay. Definitely not. All right, so that is the end of the round. Back to Miss Angelica. So Seamus, you hear a t -t 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 coming out from behind you once again, and then you hear a whoo. And this time, <laughs> finally, it strikes true, takes Tarkag in the right shoulder, um, actually bypasses the armor. That's actually really good. Um, let's see here how much damage that's going to do. Uh, okay, so that does um, a little bit of damage. Doesn't appear to do as much as you would have hoped, but um, oh. some is better than nothing. Let's see here. Seven percent. 
God, his, this is like a madman scrawling right now with how much uh, tar kegs doing here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, that brings him to there. All right, so you you hear the whoosh, you hear the as it as it it hammers through. You can see the um, the arrow sticking out of the uh, the giant figure shoulder, Seamus, and you hear her just kind of, oh, that's unfortunate. I was aiming for the head, and then you hear her duck back into the shadows. Oh. Um, and that ends her <laughs> turn. Now it is your turn, Mister Wolf. You are currently at the feet of Tarkag. He has almost crushed you twice. And you're <laughs> feeling more tugging coming from the necklace at this point. Um, as you are close to the herdstone. Okay. Um, ah, gee. Well, I guess I'm going to... I'm going to uh, heed the the tug of the of the amulet. Okay, what are you going to um, do with it? I am going to like it's just like kind of like, pushing out of the shirt. It's I it's, guess, right? it's like, pushing. It's off, you can feel it moving off of your chest and kind of in the direction okay. of the stone, but then it, but then it comes back down. Okay, well I'm going to try to get to the stone. So I'm going to try to disengage. Oh. I don't know if the, is there a disengage option? You can disengage without um, mm -hmm. incurring a attack from him if you burn all of your advantage. Okay, I will. You do can, so. or okay, yeah, or you can choose to just take the take the risk if you want and keep your advantage. No. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm going to take uh, my uh, burn my uh, advantage and okay. uh, disengage. Okay. Um, now, um, which and, uh, now, which direction do you want to take to Tarkag? Do you want to uh, or to the stone? Do you want to go around the right mm -hmm. of Tarkag, which takes you past um, Captain Jaeger, or are you going to go around the left side, which will take you? Um, not in close proximity, but in the direction of the other Bestigors and Mr. Seamus. I'll probably go around Jaeger. Okay, so you, you head to the right, which is the direction he is looking currently now. Um, you start, okay. you, you make off at a run, and you hear, you see Jaeger. Woof! Wolf, stand, 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 stout, son. Which is hilarious because I, uh, he's much younger than you. Yeah, I turn <laughs> around and I say, "One moment, boy." And then oh. I, because I, uh, oh. I look like Kratos. Um, yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to uh, uh, head towards the stone. Okay, as you pass um, Jaeger, you get within about ten feet of the stone. And that necklace begins pulling itself. It pulls itself so hard it actually rips your shirt. And is tugging, oh. almost tugging you towards the stone at this point. Now that you've gotten okay. this close, the second, the other necklace you had on flares and almost burns your chest. You feel like this ridiculous heat, which is almost, in, is almost um, uh, dichotic because there's also heat emanating off the stone. And I need you to make an endurance test, sir. Endurance? I need you okay. to make an endurance test. Let's see here. Okay. That's 47 out of 50. Okay. You are oh, good. You go, a, a degree. Just, just a success. <laughs> so, just, just a success. Yeah. Just a success. <laughs> okay. So you, um, you don't... Um, incur any uh, untoward conditions from being okay. in close proximity to this stone um, for as mm -hmm. long as you have been this close. You feel that the necklace probably uh, lessened the amount um, that you would have had to succeed by. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, But it is glowing and you can feel it begin to crack underneath. It's starting to crack and it looks like it feels like it's crumbling. 
The other necklace, though, the one that's tugging on you, is tugging so hard. It's pulling you towards the stone now. Um, Are you going to resist it? Or what are you going to do? I'm not sure. (laughs) I don't know what's right to do. So I, uh, Marius, I think Marius would probably think that the stone, or this amulet was given for a reason. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and that it must have need to do something to this stone. So I guess it, he probably wouldn't resist too much. He might not try to get knocked off his feet or something, but okay. Go ahead and make me a strength check to try to hold your footing as it's pulling you at a ridiculous pace. Okay. That is going to be a 47 out of 49. Oh, Oh, Ooh. So, do you want to re-roll that? <laughs> I, I got to re-roll. Do, do you want to, or you could add a success I'll, level to it? I'll re-roll. I'll re-roll. My strength's pretty high. Okay. Let's okay. Here. Uh, it's a little better. That's a twenty-eight out of okay. forty-nine. Okay. Good. Good. So you plant your feet, and this thing's tugging you at a, um almost superhuman amount of uh of force around your neck and you plant your feet and you start digging in and you actually have to use your pick to smack into the ground behind you and use it as a a tethering point and as you do um your muscles are straining and bulging and the links on the back of the necklace actually snap no and the amulet flies from your body almost lightning fast and smacks mm. into the center of the stone. It lifts up and it, and it hits the center. And as it does, this brilliant flash encompasses the entire room. And then you just feel heat as the stone begins to pulse back and forth. Oh, gee. All right. <laughs> Uh, do I notice anything different besides that? Just besides the heat, do I notice anything like does Tarkag react at all? Or Tarkag, as soon as it as soon as it hits, and you hear you hear, ah! Ah! and he just starts screaming his head off. He's just like in in pain, and um, he starts flailing his his uh, his sword around wildly back and forth. Jaeger's dodging easily at this point because it's um, there seems to be no skill anymore. Mm. All right, all right. Uh, the, that was guess... it. Was now it was about thirty feet to the stone. You're, st- okay. you're standing next to this herdstone, and it seems to be emanating even more energy off of it than it was before. So I okay. have ten more feet of movement. I'm gonna try to back away from it. Okay, which are you gonna move towards Tarkag? Are you gonna move a different direction? Probably back towards Tarkag. Okay, uh, back towards the center of the room. I kind of he's in the center of the room. I assume, right? Like he's yeah. Kinda, um, he's he's not. There. So the the herdstone is the center. It is the very center. Oh, okay. So you're moving kind of towards him, which would be kind of towards the door almost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Move my my remaining my remaining movement. Okay. Gen Would you like to do anything to, uh, with your free action? Uh, no. Um, I think nope. Okay. I would not. All right. That will end your turn, then, Mister Mister Wolf. Now, it is time for Captain Jaeger to save the day yet again. He's going to attempt <laughs> yet again. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to attempt and yes, he manages he manages to actually um reload his pistol. He gets the powder and shot, packs it the proper way and aims. And does that hit? 35 Oh man, it barely, it just, he boom, shoots again, but 
it actually skids off of the gut plate no. of Tarkag. Uh. Um, it, it digs in. You can see there's a, a wound on the um, on the actual armor itself, but no damage was done. No damage was infi- inflicted. And Tarkag's just flailing around like a wild beast at this point. And he's kind of still dodging back and forth. And then he's going to lunge in with his rapier. And once again, pierces, this time in the upper thigh. Holy shit. Um, I got to roll on the table again. Let's see here. All right. He pierces Tarkang's left kneecap. He lunges up. He's lunging up, and, be, and his knee is about at head level for um, for Captain Jaeger. And he and you see the rapier plunge through, and once again it it pierces f- completely through um, both sides of the of the leg, deals pretty decent damage, and at the same time you can see something just give in Tarkag's left leg, and it just goes limp and almost bends the wrong direction. As he falls um, onto onto oh. one knee, now he's still flailing around like a wild beast, but he is severely wounded. And Jaeger's like, "Ah, now's the time, men!" And that's going to be it for Captain Jaeger's turn. All <laughs> right, but this one-eyed beast, men. This one-eyed bestigor <laughs> that's been fighting um, soldier errands um, is going to, for a third time, attempt to take his head off. And let's roll for defense. Mr. Aaron's brings his shield up. But the axe bats it aside. Oh. And he's just left wide open with the wound bleeding through his chest. Oh. And the beast drives oh, no. his head down. And the horns gore him straight through the chest. <laughs> Comes out the backside. Oh, no. And you hear him. <laughs> and he just, and you, he goes limp. The sword and the shield fall from his arms. And the beast wiggles its head back and forth, tossing him to the side. Aaron's. Has not made it through this fight. No. <laughs> I feel like it just met at me now. He <laughs> <laughs> has so much to live for. Master it Seamus! Is, yo. <laughs> it is now oh. your turn. Um, Christoph, oh, at the loss of his friend, No! Aaron's! And he's, he's trying to fight his way over to him, but he's currently now engaged with two best of gores. You do also see Tarkag heavily wounded. Um, his, it looks like his um, his left leg is bent the wrong direction, and he's just wailing in pain, flailing his his great sword around him. And you also can mm. see that the herdstone is beginning to pulse quicker and quicker as time passes. You're getting brief flashes of light and energy emanating from it. Each time a flash happens, you feel a burst of heat. Even as far away from the stone as you are. Mm. Would would my character be concerned about that? Uh, you tell me. Would you know. would you like know. to make an intelligence test? Or how about an intuition uh, test? Okay. An intuition? Alright. That's my intuition. Alright. Intuition, I rolled a Oh, that's going to be a failure. I rolled a 53. Okay. So you have no idea what the hell is going on. Um, Damn it. <clears throat> but <laughs> it, it is flashing quicker and quicker. That might be a bad thing. I don't know. You don't have a lot of experience well, with ex- with like glowing stones of any kind. Well, I'm going to be then concerned with that uh, murder I just saw with that beastman. Okay. That... Uh, Try to maneuver to get a good shot at him and hopefully kill him. Okay. Go ahead and make your shot, sir. All right. 
Oh yeah, I rolled a twenty-two out of fifty. Ooh. Okay, um, that nice. would be, uh, yeah, that's a crit. Yeah, that's yeah a crit. It is. Jeez, man, what's with all these crits? Ah, uh, hot, hot hand. Roll a uh, <laughs> damn man. Um, okay, roll me a d one hundred. All right. Roll a fifty-five on the d one hundred. Fifty-five. Double crit. All right. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, roll me one more D100. Ah, the, the beast man just explodes. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. That's a 44. 44. Triple quit. <laughs> uh, okay. So you, after seeing the murder that just happened, and you can see Kristoff is, is feeling a little overwhelmed, you... You run out to the uh, a little bit further towards the center of the room, and you you bring your crossbow up and. Whoosh, um, I'm gonna say with your crit, um, because I almost forgot you needed to reload. But with a crit, it's not gonna matter. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll just say that that works. So you you bring it up, you you shoot, you fire, and it actually penetrates through the beastman's chest catches one of his, his collarbone and it's just kind of like jutting out at an odd angle. And you see the, the one eye kind of bulge for a second and he, and then he just kind of um, slumps down towards the floor, obviously dead as it, it may have yes. skidded off his collarbone and then entered into one of his lungs. Oof. He is dead, sir. That was for Anders. <laughs> For Anders. Right. For Anders. <laughs> for Anders. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna try to reload. Okay, go ahead and make an attempt to reload. That is a thirty, so that is gonna be a success. Okay. All right. So you definitely put the bolt back into place. Do you want to move back to where you were? Uh, was there one more beastman left on that side of the room? There is one more left, um, still facing Kristoff. Uh, yeah, let's see. I will, I'll step back just to be s still within range of Tarkag. Okay. All right. Easily done, sir. And that will be it. Okay. So as soon as you, as soon as you do that, you take the, the beastman with one eye. Um, he, he falls over dead. Um, Christoph is a little bit heartened by that, but he's still, um, he's still kind of covered <laughs> in the blood of his fallen comrade. Um, he's facing off against this Bestigor, who is now... Seeing um, his chance, this is a an elite individual, sweeps out the axe and takes Kristoff in the right leg. Um, it cleaves oh. in deep. Oh. And you hear him, ah! and it doesn't it doesn't go all the way through, but it goes in deep. A big hunk of flesh comes out with it as it pierces through the clothes. Um, Kristoff looks he looks rough. He looks very very rough. Um, but at that time, he um, bats away the, uh, the the return stroke of the axe with his shield, and then lunges for the throat and actually takes the Bestigor in the throat with his sword. And you see the, the oversized teeth begin to chitter back and forth, and then just bloody froth come out of the mouth as he withdraws the blade and... The beast slumps over dead. So that's a another beast Ugh. down. The only one left in this room currently is Tarkag. Oh yeah. Who's now? It's his turn. Tarkag being wounded severely and um having just this horrible pain rack in his body. Um Suddenly, you see um, his sword that's been been rather uh, uniquely pulsing now with the stone, almost like it's um, tethered to it in some way, is now um, flashing brighter and brighter. And each time it does, Tarkag flinches. Well. As he flinches one time, you see all the muscles in his arm just tighten. And this horrendous blow comes reaching out 
pat and it's actually in the direction of both you and Captain Jaeger. I'm gonna need you and Captain Jaeger to roll defense, Marius. Oh, oh good. All right. <laughs> Uh, that would be nine out of 26. Okay. Or if we're dodge. Okay. Um, all right. Let me roll for, uh, Captain Jaeger. All right. Well, the blade comes sailing over the ground and you see it cleave into um jaeger before it gets to you marius jesus you see it <laughs> crunch <laughs> into his side um you oh man i gotta roll i have to roll on this All oh right. my god i did not roll that do you crit him it crunches through <laughs> through jaeger <laughs> And cleaves him in half. It passes through you. Oh, you, you just hear, ah! and then the entire torso <laughs> oh, of his body God. splits over the burning blade, and the, and the armor blackens, and just his powder on his on his hip just detonates. Boom! And then the blade still drives towards you, Marius, and it also hits you square in the gut, mm. dealing. I don't even want to say it. I don't even say it. Uh, <laughs> say it, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I... Oh man, let me make sure I, I added it correctly. Can can I question? Yes, yes. <laughs> question. Question. Go ahead. Resolve. What the, what does that do? Can I? Um. Uh... Okay. So resolve. Um. Basically, you can make a condition go away. Um, okay. you can also like ignore a critical wound for a round, um, or like a psychology test. You can, however, see this, you can, however, spend resilience to pass a mm -hmm. test no matter what, or you can burn fate to make an attack miss you no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Can I wait to see how the damage is done before I you decide? can, you can wait for fate. You can wait. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's, let's see how much damage okay. is done. So, the sword, <laughs> the sword cleaves into you for uh -huh. uh, thirteen points of damage, which you oh. which you can um, subtract your uh, your bonuses. Toughness. Yeah, your toughness. All right, I'll take it. You'll take it. Okay. As it as it it crunches into your side, you kind of go with the momentum of it, and it actually also lights you on fire. So you have oh, I'm gonna you use, have I'm gonna one, use my resolve to to take away that fire immediately. Yeah, you can. So it oh, actually fuck, it fuck that fire. It lashes. So it, it's only it's only one um one fire condition. So it, I know it, fire conditions like <laughs> so. I'm not going to okay. have that on me. All right, so it lights your shirt on fire, actually burns away um, what little is left wow. of your torn shirt. So you're shirtless at this point, rolling around, um, and actually Ooh. through the bone dust, oh. rolling through the through the ground, caked <laughs> in the blood. The flames are extinguished, oh, and you you come up um, ready to stand, and Tarkag almost in a moment of clarity looks down at you. Good try, little man. And he moves to swing his his unarmed strike, his fist, straight towards you. I need you to roll oh, for defense one more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Uh, that's a six out of twenty-six. Okay. Oh, that's enough. Um, it's not. Um, no. So. I'll just tell you what happens. Um, right. The tell, fist. Tell you how it goes. 
the fist <laughs> careens into you, striking you. Well, I mean, it's massive. It it encompasses your entire chest, and it just boom lays into you, oh. um, dealing um, uh, seven points of damage. I'll take it. You'll take it? Okay. I'll take Seven it. points of damage, and it knocks you flat prone as you slide even further across the room. Okay. And your 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 bloodied form laying down prone and Tarkag just lets out this just horrendous roar. And you can hear um rumbling and the stone is starting to flash quicker and quicker and quicker. And that's the end of Tarkag's oh. turn. Oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so barely alive right now. Um now <laughs> At that point, um, I think we're going to take a break. All right. <laughs> we're taking our first break. We'll be back in uh, five or ten minutes, and we'll finish this uh, the rest of this fight up and see what happens. All right. All right.